Hello internet people, David here, and today we are going to learn how to make your destructible or hittable objects flash white on impact. Take a look at this. Ooh, we got flashes on hits. We got flashes on hits. So today's video, I'm going to talk about how I got flashes on my little boxes that I have in my game and how to accomplish that in a 3D space because I had a real hard time finding any sort of help online for this. Maybe I just couldn't come across it, but I used ChatGPT and it spat out some code and even that wasn't quite right. So I'll show you how to accomplish this with animated sprite 3Ds. Look at me, I'm doing tutorials now because there's things that I'm discovering while making my game that I couldn't find any resources for. So I hope this video helps you. If it does, hit the like button and consider uh, and can, can, why can't I say consider? And consider subscribing. Maybe I need to be more forceful. Subscribe. No, I don't like that. That's a, that doesn't feel good either. <laughs> Am I editing this out? No, I'm not editing this out. So here's what I've done. I have a destructible box, which is a static body 3D. I have my animated sprite 3D, which I don't really need. Originally, I was animating my boxes so that on hit they would kind of move around. And I guess I didn't quite show that off too much. I, I, I didn't mention this, but on my boxes being hit, you'll notice they kind of jiggle. They kind of shake a little bit just to really sell that impact. You can also see the, the health going down over here. So I have an animated Sprite 3D and I made kind of a death animation where it kind of just blows up like that. Um, and upon hit, I originally had this so that they would shake, kind of like this, and I'm just no longer using that. I'm just keeping it a still frame, and then I don't know why I have an idle animation. It's just one frame. Don't ask me what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you how I got the flash to work, though. So on hit, I have in my animation player just the same frame the whole time, and then this function sprite flash equals true. Also, I have a collision shape 3D just for the collision box stuff. So if we go into the script. We have the sprite flash. And this is all it is. If the sprite is flashing, I'm taking its material override, which I guess I should talk about. And I'm changing the albedo color, the albedo color, to something higher than one. One is kind of the default color. And the higher you go, the brighter it kind of gets. It kind of glows and radiates a little bit. But this is the only way that I found to actually be able to modify the character kind of in real time and make it flash without modifying too much of its animation or materials. So here's what I've done. I have my sprite base 3D, my animated sprite 3D, and my geometry instant 3D section of that animated sprite is a material override. And all I've done is taken a frame from my hit animation or just any frame and dropped it in here. So you drop it in here and then you get all these different parameters such as albedo. And here's the texture right here. And maybe I had to drop it in here again to do other things. And I haven't played much with metallic or roughness or emission or anything else. I um, definitely would consider you, you explore some of those other options. But in terms of having a flash like that, albedo is the way to go. At least I think it's called albedo. I'm just going to call it albino from now on. Just modify the albino parameter. And uh, yeah, just kept the color as white. And let's see, can I modify this right here for you guys? Just to show you what that looks like. If I go five, 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 yeah, there you go. It kind of does something like this. So, so this is what I'm doing only during while my hit animation is playing. Set that back to default one. And you can do some other stuff where you can change the color to something completely different. Like maybe you're hitting this object with an ice based weapon and you want it to kind of go blue, kind of like this flash blue as if it's freezing. That could be a cool effect. Um, you're hitting your object with a fire sword or something. Boom. Now it looks like it's kind of burning. So there's some fun that you can have just modifying the albino parameters. So yeah, that is it. And another thing I guess I will show in this video is how to make your box shake the way mine does. And here is what I ended up doing. I have a shake intensity variable, a shake duration variable, a is shaking boolean, which is kind of funny. I didn't 
necessarily specify what it is, but maybe I don't have to do that. I've been doing stuff like this, vector3, just to typecast it. Maybe you don't have to do that. This is some code that ChatGPT actually spat out for me, so you don't have to watch the rest of this video. Just ask ChatGPT how to make your animation shake, and it will spit out this code for you as well. There were some things I had to modify, like in my process function. If it's shaking, I set the shake offset. I had to keep the Y position constant, and the reason for that is because I'm doing a range of negative shake intensity to positive shake intensity. On the Y axis, which is my up and down, this box would end up going through the floor or going back up. Also, how do you guys like this animation? It's kind of ending right here. It's supposed to reset back to default. I'm still working on it, and I'm trying to make it combo right, right now. So if you notice, you should see this second attack as well. I've been modifying that. That's for the next video. I'm trying to figure out how to do combo of Comboable attacks. But yeah, if I didn't keep this to zero, the box would go up in the air or down below. And then I just capture the position. And the position is, oh, this is actually my character's position. I just modify it by the shake offset and I do this every frame. And this variable is shaken, gets set when the character takes damage. So it takes damage, I check the health, I minus the health, I check if the health is less than zero. If it is, I just call the die function, which makes it blow up and calls the kind of the death animation right here. And then I free it from the scene so we're not storing it in memory any longer. If the health is greater than zero, then we're gonna play the hit animation, which at the moment does nothing, but I use it for this albino texture. Um, and if it's not shaken, then go back to the original position. So yeah, so on hit, it's not already shaken, then keep track of its original position, set is shaken to true, and then I call this shaken function right here, which sets a timer. It does all kinds of stuff here, where the timer goes down, and when the timer runs out, then shaken's done, and we set the position back to the original position, and then we clean up the timer after using it. And I had some issues with this where the timer just never ended, so the thing would just always shake, and it would just slowly shake off screen. <laughs> Luckily, I fixed that for this video. And then, yeah, while this variable is shaken is true, it's going to call this process function every frame and continue shaking it. So that's how that works. So if you want your character on hit to flash and shake, this is one way of doing it in Godot 4 in a 3D space. I guess there's one other thing that I, I could update you guys on. I also have some attack magnetism. So by default, my attack should always be going in kind of a diagonal angle from whichever way I'm facing. But if I'm close enough to a box, it kind of gets sucked into the direction of where the box is. So I have a little bit of attack magnetism. And if you guys want me to talk about that, let me know in the comments below. Um, I think that's the end of this video. I'm David. Peace and love. Love and peace. See you guys in another game development update video. And hopefully this dream game of mine uh, gets closer and closer to completion as these videos go on. Thanks for watching. See you guys in another video. Peace out.